So this is what it's going to end up looking like with the sheets for GPT. We have a whole bunch of things that can unlock our imagination on what we could do with that text. We're going to use chat GPT for Google Sheets. So there's a number of plugins out there. Make sure you are using one that is legit and not a scam. This one's GPT for work by Tolarian or whatever that is. GPT for Sheets is the name. And if you click install to get started, you will see this on your Google Workplace Marketplace. And this plugin site has some excellent YouTube videos on how to set that up. It's really easy. The plugin walks you through it. It's basically additional setup required. And then you log into your developer account for open AI, which I've got up here here and you will request an API key. So you'll create a new security key. You only see it once. So you cut and paste that, make sure you don't lose it. You can delete the old ones there. And then you will use that API key in that plugin. And then it knows it's you and knows who to charge. So the price dropped a lot in the last few months. Don't go too crazy and start running super analytics on my account if you're working with me, but that's how you would set that up. And I'll post that in the description below. The data we're going to use today for Sheets with GPT is from Twitter data for anything you want to analyze, whatever that text may be. In this case, it is the text of the tweet. So I'm going to highlight that row and you could double click this, but then it's massive there. I think what's helpful more in the Excel, if you don't know already, you can highlight that column, click format cells and go over here to that alignment tab and click wrap text. It's a little bit easier in Google Sheets and we will see that in a second, but that text is what we're really going to look at to do a few things. So before we get too involved in this, we are going to paste this into Google Sheets as is and have some fun. So this is what it's going to end up looking like with the Sheets for GPT. We have a whole bunch of things that can unlock our imagination on what we could do with that text. And so a couple of things I came up with were suggested hashtags. So may or may not be valuable in the future of social media. Maybe AI is able to determine what kind of post matches what, and you don't really need hashtags, although it's still a cool way to organize things. So maybe these are some suggested hashtags. We've also got, how can we classify a post? In order to determine what we can do more or less of, like I've said before in this video, this allows us to use GPT to take a post list of these different tags or classifications. You can actually use a different GPT function to select from those and classify that post. So this is the classification and it's drawing from that one. You can also do all sorts of fun ones as well. Maybe emoji posts work well with millennials, but not Gen Z. I don't know. That's a good hypothesis. So maybe the prompt for GPT is, does this tweet have an emoji or not? You could also write a little formula to do that, but that's one way you could do it with GPT. I can also create some instructions. So I can say, provide a level of sentiment on a scale from negative one. So like a negative sentiment to the emotion of the tweet to positive one, zero being neutral, and then provide that. You can also make up your own scale. So maybe it's one to a hundred. So that's what's really powerful about this. Instead of having some sort of set model, you can create your own instructions and have your own output in the format you want it. So that's pretty cool. You can also do a few things I know. I'm sure you've seen a few examples around the web on explain this principle of physics to me like I'm in eighth grade. And then it's a lot easier to digest and understand without having to have all of these other concepts that are these assumed presumptions. So that text is right here and I have it in the light blue. I like to organize things with the input being green and the output being this purple AI color, magenta, whatever that is. And then I also do formulas uh, in blue. But one thing I thought was really cool is to figure out, use GPT, what is the emotion of that text? And in this case, it's excitement or enthusiasm. And then I created a regular formula from Google Sheets, just like in Excel, it's concatenate is the word for those of you that like a large vocabulary. And if I just added revise and increase that same emotion. And so that's my new prompt. So then I had ChatGPT rewrite the emotion doubled. So instead of just saying funny little comments like Olipop has entered the lemon lime chats, which was pretty good for cultural context there. Oh my God, have you heard the news? They just announced it has officially entered the lemon lime chat. So get ready to experience the ultimate flavor explosion. So thought it'd be funny to do that. And then I also did the reverse on doing it completely bland into corpse speak. So that's fun. You can do a little Goldilocks of how it is doubled in emotion, what it is now, and then what would it be completely bland. So if someone acquired them and they're like, hey, your brand voice is a little too casual, you could show them this corpse speak and you'd be like, do you really want to go that far? 
Probably not. Stick with what made them successful and their great brand voice that you have. So to pop this up for an example, I've got a version of this. One of the ways we can set this up is to have one prompt in one column. There's a number of different ways to do this. This actually has a lot of great examples and documentation in the extensions guide here. And it has this whole practice area. It's awesome. You can do multiple columns for these. So like you can have different parts of a prompt being there, which we will use, but this is very simple. You can type in the prompt here and I'm gonna copy it or drag and drop it down is further down there. And this just gonna keep the same one. And now you've got GPT calling column B2 here in this case, which is the text. That's our source data that we want to apply this to. And then it's bringing the prompt from that second one. And then you hit enter. Notice I did modify that prompt a little bit there. I set it for it to just say yes or no. It has a tendency, especially when you're asking something that is a value judgment, like is this funny or not? Because it is an AI, it doesn't like to state an assertion that something is funny or not. It's trying to hold back these kind of opinions because it is not a human like us. It really depends on who you're talking to if that's actually funny. So it does give you that kind of long verbose explanation unless you precisely describe the output that you want. And for the most part, it will agree. You might have to finagle around with that a little bit, but you can also drag and drop this all the way down and see what it creates. So it did give us a little bit of a trouble on the Boomer Energy one, but let's see, I will wrap that there. So you can uh, go to format wrapping and you can either wrap it so you can see it, or sometimes if you didn't need to see all of this, you can go to wrapping and clip. If you didn't want to look at all of the text, that's a option as well. So I'm going to keep that in wrap so we can compare some of the other ones. But this one, it does give us that caveat, but it does acknowledge the reference to Boomer Energy. So I think it's trying to say uh, it thinks it's funny, but it doesn't really want to commit to it. But that's OK. One simple thing we can do is do some data formatting. So it's actually pretty amazing that it does this. Any of you have worked in data before, things like time and units of measure are actually some of the more difficult things that can happen just because of all of the differences and conversion between one or the other. Ask NASA about that one. But uh, we've got UTC here for the universal time. Highlight this and let's do shifts on two of these columns and click insert two columns to the right or let's like hopped over that so you can drag and drop them right there. So one thing we can do here, again, we can wrap this in Google Sheets. You've got format wrapping and you can choose wrap or clip. Clip would cut it off so you don't necessarily have to see the rest of it, which I guess is fine. In this case, let's show you wrap. You'll see the whole thing there and format at the top and clip. So I don't really need to see it, but we want to change it here. So what we're going to do is use a different function from GPT and use instead of a prompt, we're going to call it format. And we're gonna stick with that color coding. I have to do green as an input. <laughs> if anyone is in Excel or Google Sheets a lot, some people like to color code a whole bunch. I'm gonna use AI for the formula up here and that'll be the like new time or date. We'll see what we wanna do. So we can actually say, instead of this UTC time, we're gonna do ISO standard time. And I believe that'll pull back in American style time. We can do European. Uh, time. So we're going to see that swapped with the month and date and the military time there as well. Hopefully you could even do specific time. It's the best time or something else. Time in Bali, Indonesia. Let's see what happens. One of my favorite places in the world. So let's see if we can do GPT underscore format and then click that source data for the text that it's going to process. And we're going to choose the format there as our prompt. Hit enter and see what we have. We have an ISO standard that looks pretty normal. I'm going to drag and drop that down here and it's going to pull those other formats and see what happens. Looks like we do have an answer. And we do have European time, Pacific time. We've got a little PST at the end and Bali time is WITA. Didn't recognize that last time, but Let's try something new too. How about day of the week? And then we can either cut paste or drag and drop right there. See what happens. So there you go. Let's get crazy enthusiastic. So we're going to hop here 
We've got text again. I'm gonna highlight four columns because we need four. And I'm gonna click that and click insert four columns to the left of those. The first column is going to be instructions to get the emotions. What we were looking at before was the which feeling or emotion is being expressed as the text. I'm going to put that in our prompt. I'm just going to call this emotion instructions. You can call it prompt, whatever. I keep these separately as we're talking through them. Could be just a set of different prompts, but it's the same concept here. We're using that regular GPT instruction, and this is going to be an output. So I'm using that same color coding to go to magenta or purple or whatever we want to do. For that, we're going to go GPT function, our source texts, and the emotion instructions there. And so we're gonna get an emotion, hopefully excitement or enthusiasm, and we're gonna drag that down here. So normally I wanna do at least 25 or 50 results. You could do a lot more to have some really good statistically significant results, but these are pretty interesting. But what I wanna do here is do that regular kind of sheets formula. Do is equals concatenates, there and choose a quote and type increase significantly or exaggerate comma quote space quote comma click the cell and there you go so it's got a space in between those and I'm gonna hit enter. And now it's taking that autofill, at least in Google Sheets and Excel, sometimes we'll do that. If not, you can cut and paste or drag and drop that. And let's see what happens there. So that is our text to increase emotions. And now we're going to do something a little bit different. We're gonna call this GPT edits. So I'm equals GPT underscore edits parentheses, I want the source text as the first one, comma. My prompt is going to be this text to increase emotions. See what looks. There you go. So now instead of saying Olipop has entered the lemon lime chat like I mentioned before, oh my God, you have to check this out. So there we go. We have this exaggerated emotion thing and you can change this prompt to whatever you want. Maybe you want to make it funnier, maybe you want to make it more engaging, maybe you want to make it appeal more to a technical person. So there's lots of different fun things we can do. And this is all broken out. You could probably all do it in one GPT column. You could actually not have to cut and paste everything and put it in a little separate thing, but I like to keep it clean like this. So give this a go. Be as creative as you can and explore other different ways to bring in the power of GPT to your text and find new insights and new ideas and everything to see where we're going with this.